Fishburne. And truly her life, uh, she's a living epistle of the fact that what the mind can conceive and can believe, it can achieve. And so following this video clip, we're going to have Sally come to the microphone. In the name of prophets, they were shipped by the millions over the course of hundreds of years. Africans bought, sold, and enslaved to work the lands of the new world in the lucrative Atlantic slave trade. In the name of racial purity, Jews, Poles, Gypsies, and other undesirables were deported by trains from all over Europe, taken to both labor and death camps by Nazi Germany. Both groups violently separated from their families, their peoples, their homes, their cultural roots severed and replanted all over the world, forced to begin life anew. Most would not endure. These are the stories we should never forget to ensure these atrocities never happen again. Words of Bonds, retelling of the stories of slavery and the Holocaust, a school news nationwide production. For more information, please visit www.wordsofbonds.com. I am here at the invitation of my friend Bill Trulling and I am somewhat bored by the fact that he should have chosen me to be his escort and I've been thinking, what can I say that will explain our brief friendship, which is clearly intense. And I thought I'd share with you an ex and two experiences, one very recent, last summer, my husband and I did a European trip and we wound up in Normandy. We went to the cemetery where 100,000 American boys are resting. And it touched my heart deeply. And I shed some tears and I thanked those boys for having saved my life. Had it not been for the fact that they gave their lives to fight evil, evil would have won, and I would not be. And as I left the museum, I read above the door of the museum something that I think explains Bill's friendship with me. It said, Suffering broke me. Brotherhood raised me up. And from those wounds flow ri rivers of liberty. He and I both choose to use the freedom the, that flows from su our suffering to try and build a better world by addressing young people wherever they are. I am now a retired teacher, but I haven't stopped teaching. I go wherever I'm invited and I talk to young people about what makes life good. Being good to others is one factor. He is using words to reach them. It occurs to me that oftentimes when we lack the words, we express that by deeds. I remember very clearly a very old story. I was only 